Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1,672. The topic is nutrition and the title is Managing Nutrition Tracking Related Stress. Yes, tracking your foods can be stressful. If you feel that, you are not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, Just adding another task to your day, no matter what it is, even if it's helpful, is going to cause some degree of stress. So a client recently reached out and said that they were struggling with this. Uh, They're actually a participant in our live monthly programming service. Uh, With that service is you get brand new programming every four weeks based on a specific goal that you have in mind, and then you get 24-7 access to ask me any question you want ever. So this person reached out, and they said that they're having some stress with tracking their foods. They want to be successful. They they said they, they do have the desire to be successful. However... They, they're just falling off track with tracking their foods. It's making them question themselves or having self-doubt, and it's just putting them in a really bad uh, headspace. What I wanted to discuss with them is what I'll share in today's podcast is when you're feeling stressed with tracking nutrition, don't just completely drop it. Just loosen the parameters. For example, they think that they have to track every single day which is causing them to not want to track at all. Well, <laughs> if our options are seven days a week or zero days a week, that's pretty rough, right? That's, that's going to that's gonna be very challenging because you're going to want to choose the seven, but life gets in the way, it's a new habit, there's a lot of stressors going on, and you're going to feel like, ah, oh, man, I missed a day, I might as well just drop to zero. If I'm thinking seven or zero, I'm going to be at zero a lot more than I would be at seven. What I'm encouraging you to do, and I'm going to give you some other tips as well, is it's not, you know, seven or zero. It's just, you know, if I can do it three days a week, four days a week, five days a week, whatever it can be, anything above zero <laughs> is is better, and that's the, the better approach to take. So if you are feeling stressed related to tracking your nutrition, I want to give some tips. If you already have a consistent routine, meaning you eat, pretty much the same things every day. There's not a lot of chaos in your life. Good lucky, you know, good for you. <laughs> but there's not too much unpredictableness uh, to your life. The daytimes are pretty normal. You tend to eat the same breakfast, same lunch, or maybe you have two or three options, but you tend to cycle through the same stuff. And for the most part, you eat roughly the same things for dinner. It, it Maybe once or twice a week, you might get thrown a curveball by life. But overall, pretty consistent. If you're in that scenario and you're thinking to yourself, why am I tracking this every day when I'm eating the same damn things every day? I understand. (laughs) Uh, Totally understand. I would encourage you to still track at least one or two days a week as like a a self-check-in. We very quickly lie to ourselves or we excuse away behaviors that are counterproductive because we don't want to feel bad. So it's totally, it totally makes sense as to why we do it. But If you don't track at all, if you're like, I am so consistent, I don't even need to track. (laughs) I I would, I would, you know, advise against that. I would still track one or two days a week just as a check-in because you can very quickly lose track of what small micro adjustments you start making. So for example, let's say you typically have beef and rice and one day you're kind of short on the groceries and you're like, ah, you know, I got some chicken here. I'll just cook some chicken and rice. Well, there's actually a significant difference in calories between ground beef. Say it's like 90, 10 or 85, 15, uh, or if you do like 80, 20, but there's a huge difference in total calories of ground beef versus chicken for the same weight. So if you do six ounces of ground beef or six ounces of chicken, those are not equal. They are different. So you might think to yourself as well, you know, I I, I used to have beef and rice, now I have chicken and rice, same thing. You know, meat and rice. No, (laughs) it is not the same thing. And tracking in your app at least once or twice a week would be very helpful because all of a sudden you'll see that difference in your app and then that starts to make you more aware of what differences can happen without us knowing. One of my favorite quotes is, you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it. It's a confusing quote, but I love the quote (laughs) because 
it keeps me pursuing more knowledge because I don't know what I don't know. I might think I know it every like I never really think that, <laughs> but uh, you might think like okay, well you know I've been I've been eating the same things. I'm totally fine. Well, sometimes we don't recognize that different foods do have different macros. So for example, changing beef to chicken, or you're tired of rice one day, so you have a potato instead. Is that the same? How do we know? We might think something's the same because meat is meat or carbs are carbs, but that's not always true. So we don't know what we don't know. Ensuring that you put yourself in position to recognize what you don't know often in life is helpful. Uh, I've, I've used the example before that if I see a, a new video on YouTube and it'll be like maybe somebody kind of like semi-famous popular at the moment kind of powerlifter and they're like they have a how to squat video. I'll, I'll watch it. Number one, because I just want to see if there's anything they're saying or teaching that I don't know for myself. And I want to know it for clients as well. And it's nice to just, if you watch it and you're like, okay, I knew everything, it makes you feel good. Like you got confirmed that what you thought you knew, you actually know. There's a little bit of a degree of this wonderment. I don't know what the proper word would be. I don't like the word like self-doubt in the sense where I, I always doubt whether I know everything. You, I don't think it's a proper way to set that up in your mind. I, I would rather think is, I just, let me just see if there's something there. You know, like curiosity. I think is a, maybe a better framework for how to think of that is, is to always be curious. Always be curious if there's more to know. A um, little weird side tangent. I, I was laughing a little bit at myself is I've created, started creating reels when I make Instagram posts because they get better views than like traditional normal posts do where it's just like, you know, photo slides or a single video. When you make reels, more people get to see them. Well, when I started making reels, it automatically shares to Facebook and Facebook started making like this reels page for me, I guess. I don't know what it is. Uh, and more people have been starting to watch and comment on the reels in Facebook. And I've gotten a couple like negative comments. And it's interesting to me because like one, for example, I talked, I talked about no touch deadlifts and this is a conventional deadlift technique to where after you do the first deadlift, you lower down towards the floor, but you stay about an inch off the floor and you go right back into your next repetition. And you can do that for multiple reps. So it's a no touch deadlift. So instead of touching the floor between each rep, you come within like an inch of the ground and you come back up. And somebody commented and they said, like, basically they're, they said, so these are RDLs. Meaning like you're trying to post this like it's a brand new exercise or something, you know, unique and all you're really doing is RDLs. And at first when I saw that, I was like, I was like, well, am I? Because <laughs> like I was kind of confused and I was like, they're not RDLs because your shin angle changes. So then I watched the video and I was like, okay, no, like my shin angle is changing. And I talk about in the description when I teach clients that their shin angle needs to change. Uh, so for example, like when you do an RDL, your shin angle should always stay vertical and you're bending through the knee joint to some degree, but you're mostly trying to push your hips back to stretch your hamstrings and glutes as you would do basically the, what looks like the top half of a deadlift. However, you never lower down more than what would your shins can stay vertical. If your shins would start to angle forward in an RDL, you would stop. You, so your range of motion in an RDL is usually very short. You might lower the bar to maybe an inch or two below the bottom of the kneecap. That's it. So it's it's actually quite a few inches different than what would be considered a no-touch deadlift, where as you lower the bar down, as the bar goes past your knees, you do have to allow your shin to angle forward, so you get flexion and movement in your ankle joint, and that causes now a shift to where the quadriceps have to take in pressure and balance that to the hamstrings, balance that to the glutes. It's way more involved in regards to uh, musculature balances and activations. So a no-touch deadlift is very different than an RDL, uh, and it helps to still develop that leg drive portion, that push portion off the floor. So it teaches people to push a deadlift off the floor, not pull the deadlift off the floor. So what I've, I was kind of like bummed for this person 
because immediately they saw it and just dismissed it and they're like, ah, so it's already else. This is stupid. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're missing. Like, you're missing it. Ah. Like, no, <laughs> I just felt bad because I'm like, there's so much, there's so many differences and it might be very nuanced, but they're significantly different when you're the one under the weight and it's significantly different in regards to the training effect. So an RDL will help with the lockout, but it does not correct a pull mechanic rather than a push mechanics. And it doesn't help develop, um, bracing pressure as you're able to move multiple joints and it doesn't develop the the push strength off the floor so there's significant differences and i was bummed for that person because they missed it they missed the opportunity to learn something new that might be able to progress them forward and that's the mindset i don't want to have is where i look at something and i might automatically just say like ah, i know that and i move on what if i don't what if there's something new that I'm missing? You know, it's, you, you want to have that curiosity, that excitement to see if there's something there. And I just felt bad for them. And it's a bummer because commonly people with that mindset, they, they, they make some progress initially, then they just kind of plateau, they putter out, and then they never really achieve their goals. Because they're, they never look past what they think they know. And, and so many times there are elements outside of our knowledge that are holding us back and you have to be willing to expose yourself to that. You have to be put your, you have to put yourself in a position to learn what you don't know. And that's just, oh, I'm just so bummed for that person. But that's an example of a mindset that I think would be helpful is even if you think I eat consistently, I eat the same things every day. I would encourage you to still track once or twice a week because rarely do people actually do that. There are small deviations, there are small changes. So a second tip, if you already have a consistent routine, is to ask yourself a question every day. Okay? The question is, did I eat anything extra? Did I have any snacks, any nibbles? Did I drink anything with calories today? Very often... You'll think, oh, I have the same breakfast, I have the same lunch, I have the same dinner, I even have the same kind of snacks in between those meals. It's always the same. But then you think back and you're like, oh, yeah, I did stop at the gas station. I was kind of thirsty, so I drank a Gatorade. Well, Gatorade might have 160 calories. It's a lot of sugar. Did you need the Gatorade at that time? You know, you might have needed some, like, quenching of your thirst. Water or a, or a lower calorie drink might have been a better choice. But often we have those small things. You know, you had a handful, extra handful of nuts while you were uh, cleaning out the cabinet. Maybe you had a granola bar because you were just kind of hungry between meals. These little things pop up, but we don't register them if we already have the mindset that I eat the same thing every day. You're setting yourself with a mindset that is creating a framework that you're not going to want to disprove. So if you have the mental framework that I eat the same things every day, you will be blind to any differences because that's what you already think. So having a question every day to remind yourself is say, did I eat anything extra? Did I have any small snacks? Did I drink anything? You know, just check with yourself every day. And then the third tip, if you already have a consistent routine, is if your progress kind of slows down or you're wanting to get greater progress, I would encourage you to increase the frequency of tracking your foods. You're going to think, oh, I'm doing everything right, but track it anyhow. And you're going to quickly see if there are small deviations. So I've had people before, like, they'll tell me, you know, hey, I've been tracking my food and I haven't been making enough progress. Do you think we should change our numbers? Like our calorie targets and our protein targets. And I'll say, well, you know, if you look through the last 14 days, you've only hit the actual calorie and protein targets five out of the last 14 days. We don't need to change the numbers because we're not actually hitting the numbers. What you're doing isn't reflected by the numbers so changing the numbers isn't going to make a difference either we have to actually just be more adherent to the numbers and that'll help so if you already have a consistent routine you can drop down from checking every day but at least still track maybe once or twice a day uh, i mean tw <laughs> once or twice a week and then ask yourself that daily question did i eat anything extra snacks drinks anything like that and then if progress slows down or if you want to increase the rate of progress Increase your frequency of tracking before you make changes to your nutrition program or your training program. Okay. Or do that at least with coinciding <laughs> with those changes. Now, if you don't have a consistent routine yet, 
I would encourage you to track as often as you can. It still doesn't have to be seven or zero. You know, it's still not seven days a week or zero days a week. Uh, but if you can get four days a week, five days a week, if you can at least manage that, that's better than zero. But it lets you know if you have a, just a crazy stressful day and you don't track anything, don't shut down. Just say, okay, well, that was one of the days this week that I won't track, but I'll try to get back into it tomorrow. Totally fine. Totally fine. You know, something is always better than nothing. Just it's the more often you track, the more education you get from the process, and it'll just help you uh, make progress faster and be more aware of what you do or don't know. So you want to track as often as you can if you don't have a consistent routine, but it's okay if you miss a day or two. Also, most tracking apps allow you to save meals. If you have a common breakfast, just name it breakfast one, you know, or whatever it might be. Uh, and then you can just add the meal rather than adding the individual foods. That makes adding your, your foods each day uh, much faster. So that'll help a lot. Sometimes, you know, certain apps, you have to have a premium for that. But it's like 3 or $4 a month. It's not going to break your bank, bank account. So that's something that can make it faster. And for example, let's say that you pay for the premium. You use it for four months to get that, like, make it faster, make it easier. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, now I know what I'm doing. Let me let me drop off the premium and go back to the free. So it could just be a small time commitment, you know, where you pay the extra 4 or $5 a month just for a couple months. Also, another tip is to schedule a dedicated time of the day that you are going to track your foods. Now, you can plan it out in the morning. You can kind of track in the morning, write out what you think you're going to have, and then at the end of the day, go back through and make any changes if there were any changes that happened. You can track in the middle of the day. You can track in the evening, kind of think through the rest of the day, uh, what happened up until this point, see if I need any protein or I need a couple extra calories or something before I go to bed. You want to track, like, but knowing there's a dedicated time. Don't just haphazardly do it when you get time. You won't get time. You have to decide that this is the time that I will take to do that. And that's going to help you be much more consistent. An uh, uh, additional tip is to pair it with an existing habit. If there's something you already do every day, then pair that with tracking your foods. So that way you'll have that consistency of the other habit paired with the habit that you want to have new. The last kind of tip for people who are, are not in a consistent routine is to recognize that you're in a learning phase. And although it might be overwhelming right now, if you can invest into it as much as your schedule and stress allows, you're going to learn a lot. And as you learn more, you'll make more progress, you'll be happier with life, you'll feel less overall stress from being disappointed about not making your goals. And as you learn more, it just be, kind of comes easier. And once you have that consistent routine, maybe instead of tracking five days a week, you can go down to four days a week or three days a week. If you invest into the energy now, you can relax later. So invest now while you're learning. Learn what you can. Get into the routine. You know, go all in. Dive into it. Get in there. Get in the mix. Learn and invest the energy now so you can relax later. Cool. Three more general tips is to track new foods. Anytime you have a new food, enter it into the app so you're at least aware what's in the food. Calories, protein-wise, any sugar content, things like that. So anytime you have a new food, track that just to see what's in it. Number two is to remember that everything has calories. Now, not literally everything because water doesn't. But anything you put in your face counts. Even if it's just a bite here, a small nibble there, just recognize that if it has calories and you put it in your face, we have to account for that because the body does. <laughs> so remember that everything you eat, whether it's a big meal, small meal, grazing, they all it all adds up, so you have to account for it. And then the third tip is the mindset of progress, not perfection. You don't have to be perfect when it comes to nutrition tracking. You just have to do more than you've done before to get something new. You know, if you want to progress and make changes and move forward towards your goals, you do have to do new things. You have to do new to get new. So you just have to do better than you've done before with tracking to get better than you've had before. So progress, 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 not perfection. The process of tracking is, it's education, nutrition education, self-education. Uh, it helps with accountability. It helps with the discipline factor. And it'll help ensure that you actually make progress for your efforts. The worst thing 
is to feel that you're constantly under the pressure of a diet, but to not make progress from the diet. Ugh. Sad, sad, sad. So, tracking a little bit, any bit, you know, whatever bit you can manage is very helpful in a lot of ways. So if you're stressed, don't drop it completely. Just loosen the parameters and try some of the tips that we shared in today's podcast. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like our podcast, please share it. The more people we share it with, the more people we can help. Thank you to those who financially donate towards the podcast. It does have a high hosting cost on all the different platforms. You can donate on our website. Even just $5 a month, $10 a month, whatever you can give, it helps keep this up and running. So I appreciate it very much as it all goes directly towards those costs. And then if you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us. Please follow us under the name Brutal Iron Gym on Instagram and YouTube. As always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening.